guys, John Claymore here. Now, guys, I want to kind of re-go over the uh, Minneapolis shooting um, ordeal. And, of course, I released a video on this earlier today. But the reason why I want to kind of like uh, rehash this a little bit is because this is a sign of more and more social degradation to come. You see, right now, of course, I talked about this in the video about the uh, the nurse who decided to film herself after she lost a patient, which, by the way, I don't even think that is what really happened. I think she was just a... Uh, doing something for clicks. We're noticing a much, much uh, more selfish, much, much more, uh, let's just say a much, much more self-absorbed society. And when this where it happens, people begin to actually lose faith in the system. Now, guys, the uh, lady, Mrs. Uh, Yarber, and of course, we'll probably uh, play the video again here in this video. She was outside of her home after this incident, I guess a day or so afterwards, of course, when the news had broke and she had already given her interviews to the actual uh, the media itself, especially in Minneapolis, she had to face down uh, BLM protesters. Now, guys, the reason why I want to talk about this is because we've already gotten some information that the race scriptures are out. Benjamin Crump, the BLM go-to attorney, he's actually going to be representing uh, the family, I guess, in a lawsuit against the city of Minneapolis. Uh, at the same time, I'm pretty sure you're going to see uh, Al Sharpton come out here, and I'm pretty sure at the same time, GoFundMe itself is going to be under much, much more scrutiny. And the reason why I want to talk about GoFundMe, because I think right now the Go GoFundMe, which, by the way, is for the most part being kind of controlled by the wokes. I mean, the wokes have taken advantage of GoFundMe before, and GoFundMe can't exactly shut these people out. But we'll be talking about the wokes over the course of this video and the societal things to continue to come. I mean, this channel right here is not just to talk about society and things going on. It's also a lot of, a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways designed to kind of prep you guys for what's to come so that way you guys are not so surprised or caught off guard when something actually occurs. Now, guys, with that out of the way, make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you guys cut on those notifications. Go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button. Let's go ahead and make this channel a little bit bigger. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'm going to get you guys' thoughts on this right here. And uh, let's go ahead and get a few hundred likes on this video. And let's go ahead and get this video out to people so that way they can see exactly what's going on. Because if you hit the thumbs up button, the video does better than the algorithm. And it actually travels and then the people can actually see it and actually be informed. Now, guys, when we have to rehash this incident, we, we already know. A guy by the name of uh, Techly uh, Sunberg, this guy right here was mentally ill. He had been stalking this lady for a while. He went to her. He went right outside of her home. He put a few rounds through her, uh, through her actual house itself, through her actual apartment. Kids had to be moved out. Of course, six-hour standoff. Cops had to shoot the guy. We later on found out that the guy actually did fire at the uh, the cops themselves. We also found out that he had a 45 and a 38 caliber pistol on him. At, at the, at, at, uh, had had it on him. I know I'm getting kind of ahead of myself, but uh, let me kind of go ahead and just just kind of get back on topic. The guy's mother or stepmother they are going to be involved in trying to sue the city of Minneapolis. Of course, like I said, Benjamin Krupp, the ultimate race scripter, he's out here looking to make a profit. Now, guys, this is what I'm talking about by being self-absorbed. You see, we no longer care about people involved. We no longer care about the citizens of the nation. We only care about our own nefarious means, our own ulterior end game. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because, and this is the thing, we got to use some common sense here. So regardless of what you may think of the lady, now before we really and truly dive into this. I want to go ahead and play what she was saying to the protesters one more time. I want you guys to actually hear the protesters. Don't worry. It's not going to be the hour and a half. It's not going to be the hour and like 30 second clip that I aired earlier today. What it's going to be is it's going to be the hour and 30 second clip with like the additional uh, minute and 30 seconds because I want to show you guys the full actual, the full actual, uh, let's just say the full rebuttal of the protesters themselves and then we'll come back and actually talk about it because it's just more and more proof that society as a whole has not only degraded, but it's getting much, much worse. You guys are celebrating his life. It was a terror. I'm sure it was this a terror. It's not okay. It's not okay. You're alive. Okay. Shut up. You guys need to just let it go. Grief in silence. This is not okay. okay. This is not a George Floyd situation. George Floyd was un unarmed. He was unarmed. You're alive. I'm sorry. This is not okay. This is not okay. My kids have to deal with this and probably have a mental illness now because they almost lost their life. There's bullet holes in my kitchen Not because you, he though. said... Get away! No, could you think I'm such a panic in my my kids in the car? My kids in the 
You're probably thinking to yourself, what's the very first thing that sticks out here? The thing that sticks out to me is hearing some white guy screaming, you're alive though. Okay, you're alive though. Okay, the next thing that sticks out to me is um, he's been there for a while. He's been like this for a while. You guys had an opportunity to take care of this. You guys had an opportunity to actually see him. Basically, what's going on is what I have said in several other videos. People on the left, the wokes, they don't like to take personal accountability. Now, I'm not saying that somebody should have uh, went and grabbed Mr. Sunberg and put him inside of an institution. What I'm saying is that somebody should have actually gone and checked on that. Guys, let me kind of break this down for you right quick. I want you guys to ask yourself a question really quick. And then you just, just say it to yourself and comment in the comment section if you've ever done this. Have you ever worked any type of retail? I know what you're thinking. What does retail have to do with this fire? Hear me out. Have you ever worked any type of retail, like any type of like, uh, like say Walmart or Best Buy or something like that right there, any type of store like that? The reason why I'm bringing this up is that one of the main ways to actually deter crime, like say if you have like a certain individual in the store that you think might steal something, uh, one of the ways to deter a theft from occurring is to simply walk up to a person and ask them if they need anything. If you do this right here, what it does is it tells people that other people are alerting. Now, I'm not saying the same thing applies with Mr. Sunberg, but I don't know if you know this or not, but if you just go check on somebody, especially if they're not doing very well, it might actually change the mood. You see, a lot of things that happen in society are really the result of no, of no proper course correction. And of course, and don't worry, we'll get back on Benjamin Crump here in a second. But did you ever think for yourself that maybe it's possible, like maybe it's actually just a little bit, maybe it's slightly possible that maybe if somebody in the actual area themselves may have checked on this guy, maybe this incident might, this incident might not have occurred. The fact of the matter is that people are so self-absorbed and so ingratiated in their actual phones and YouTube and social media that they really and truly don't care. They've been desensitized as a whole, and now they're doing everything from nefarious means. Now, the guy who's screaming in the back, but you're alive, though, obviously that guy right there is an idiot, but it's also very, very possible he's trying to egg her on to make a scene a lot worse. A lot of people voted for Biden, I think, in my opinion, because they wanted to see the insanity and the chaos. They wanted the insanity to come. They knew it was going to happen. Now, somebody's going to come in the comment section, well, 2020 was very, very chaotic. We had to get rid of what the hell was in charge. To no, 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 no. Shut up. Things in 2020 were getting chaotic because of blue state governors, okay? Let's just go ahead and be honest with that right there. One of the main reasons that Trump had an issue with this is because, well, like I said, blue state governors were elected in 2018. They were in charge in 2019 and 2020 of their states, and they weren't exactly compliant with what the president had to say, okay? All these blue states are getting worse and worse and worse than the people that are actually live in. And by the way, I know there's some good people who live in these states. I'm not trying to bash anybody. But uh, it really looks to me like almost like the city itself right there is just, it's just going to hell because of some of the people that live there. Now, I know that there's a certain individual there. It was, by the way, he was holding the lady, Miss Yarborough. He was holding her and comforting her. Very, very big, dark individual. This right here is proof that good people in those areas still do exist. He's comforting her probably because he empathizes with her. He may not have empathized with her at the time, but these people do exist. The point I'm trying to make is that it seems to me that the unempathetic, self-absorbed people are the ones who, quite frankly, don't really care about this and are purposely trying to make these issues worse for their own personal gain. I mean, think about it really quick. These people like to go into work and talk shit about things and then virtue signal the next day. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why the hell would they do this right just so that way they could go into work the next day and uh, talk to their buddies about it? 
it's because these people are psychotic or sycophantic and they're so self-absorbed and so ingratiated in themselves that they don't have the ability to actually think or empathize with somebody else. I mean, dude, this woman has lost her job, her kids, they're on the street, okay? They got to rely on their mama to take care of them. They got to rely on their mom. By the way, those kids are black. They're not white. So, yeah, BLM not caring about two little black kids, that does not surprise me. Now, guys, here's the other aspect that I want to talk about. This is where we're going to end the video at. It's going to take a minute. Benjamin Crump and Al Sharpton have made a living off of this type of stuff. They have made a living, an absolute living off of race scripting. Al Sharpton used to go into actual stores and say, you're not, uh, you're, he was, basically what he would do is he would go inside little shops, little stores and say that, look, uh, you're racist because you don't have enough black employees and the company would actually capitulate. He'd make a stink of it. He'd go out there in the media. Don't worry, I'll be leaving a video from another content creator, one of my favorite content creators, Actual Justice Warrior about the Tiana Brawley case. I highly advise you guys watch the very, very big, fat Al Sharpton basically get pushed on the ground by another, uh, let's just say, another individual who was black who was not having none of Al's bullshit. But here's the thing. Al Sharpton is going the way of the Dota. So, uh, Benjamin Crump, I guess he's the next person. By the way, Benjamin Crump, he makes his money off of this right here. George Floyd, all this stuff. Anytime something occurs, Benjamin Crump's got to get called in to make a scene. Benjamin Crump's got to get called in to get money at people. That right there is what this entire crap is about. And by the way, these lawyers are not giving this money to these neighborhoods. Now, guys, here's where I want to end the video at, though. Okay, you already know that Benjamin Crump's a race grifter. You already know that Al Sharpton's a turd. And you already know this situation is only getting worse by the works. But here's the thing I want to kind of touch on. Right now, the current president of the United States, these people, by the way, the ones that they voted, these people actually voted him in, or these people, look, look, we can talk about 2020 all the time, and of course, you had, people had all kinds of reasons for voting for Biden, people had their reasons for voting for Trump, I mean, I voted for Trump twice, I would probably vote for him a third time, I prefer him over DeSantis, I've already talked about it in another video, and the reasons why, and we're getting more and more and more dirt out on Ron, don't worry, we'll, we'll talk about it later today, now, I'm not being anti-Ron, I might still, but no, but let's get back on topic, the thing is this right here, BLM, what are they doing in 2020? They rioted. They destroyed property. They showed you that they did not care about actual black families. They showed you they did not actually care about black people themselves. They did this for nefarious means. We want the cops out of here so that way we can do this. We can do that. Let's just go ahead and be honest. In these inner cities where a lot of crime is at, let's face it, a lot of illegal shit's going on, and the actual arrest statistics and crime rates show that it's mostly them doing it. So that right there is what it looks like to me, is it looks like they want these cops and stuff gone so that they can get on back to doing criminal acts. They don't believe in being held accountable. They don't want to be held accountable. They want to be able to do what the hell they want to do, and things are probably going to get worse, especially in these cities. Now, before I tell people, get out of the cities, I'm almost inclined to say, no, don't get out of the cities. You voted for this crap. You put these people in office. Then again, though, like I said before, you see a person like this right You see this woman right here. You see Miss Yarbrough. You see that individual who's actually comforting her, like you saw in the other half of that video. There are still good people out there. The problem is that they are being overtaken by the bad people. By the way, I don't think how you vote determines who you are, okay? Somebody's going to say he's just coming here, just another tribalist. No, 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 no. I know people who vote Democrat who are good people, okay? It just takes them a while to wake up to see what the hell is going on. By the way, I know some Republicans who are absolutely turd individuals, absolutely turd people, okay? I want to go ahead and get that out of the way right now. But here's the thing. BLM is only going to get worse, and here's the reason why it's going to get worse. Their current president right now is polling at an extremely low rate, and yes, the price of gas is going down in certain areas, but it's a historical fact. The party that comes into power in a, in a presidential year, if they don't get things on track, or at least start to, get, start to actually improve things, they get absolutely annihilated in 2010. Barack Obama had like a 50% approval rating in, 2000, in 2010. His party got absolutely annihilated in the 2010 uh, in, in the 2010 midterm elections. What do you think is going to happen when these people feel like uh, we're not in power anymore? Now, by the way, these cities are going to stay blue. And quite frankly, obviously, I would like for Republicans to get back in and overtake things. The right ones. The right ones. I'm just telling you guys right now, giving you guys a bit of a heads up. This type of activity is probably going to get worse. And we're going to have to tough it out. We're going to have to actually get through it together. Now, guys, I want to go ahead and throw that out and let you guys know the social, the social alienation is probably going to get a lot worse. I wanted to use this as a situation to actually talk about the situation and let you know who the race scriptures are. By the way, also something else too, GoFundMe. All I've got to say about GoFundMe is this right. You are allowing the, the criminal to get more money off this. Even though he's dead, his family is getting more money for being a criminal than the girl is, who, by the way, is not, not going to have a job, lost her job, has got two kids to take care of. That or this type of society we're living in, and it's probably going to look worse for the time being but don't worry, guys. We can get through this together. Guys, John Claymore here. If you guys like this, if you guys like this content. 
Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button, cut on the notifications, hit the subscribe bell, leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you guys later.